What's going on today? Internet Selfish here with Retrospect. We are going to go over the 2023 handsets of the year for retro games. And man, was it a crazy year this year. We had every manufacturer pumping them out. And so we are going to take a look at this stack of handsets that I have so that I can clean off my desk because it is absolutely out of control. Let's take a look. Couple house cleaning things. I'm not going to talk about every device that came out last year, and I'm not going to even talk about all of my favorites. I'm just going to talk about the ones that are kind of stand out to me right now. And we are going to start that off with the SF2000. Now, this is not the greatest device that came out last year, but if you want to spend $20, which is not bad for a device like this, you have a decent device. Yes, it has some screen tearing and things like that, but this actually plays really well and it has community support. So you can actually update your firmware on here with community support. But if you want to have a device where you can throw it at your kids and not have to have them worry about it, that costs less than a Happy Meal. Seriously, those things are getting damn expensive. Maybe not less, but close. This is the device. And we're just going to move right along from there. And because I'm a glutton for controversy for some reason, maybe it's just because I need something to fill my life. I am going to say the Mio Mini Plus. This is a device that I carry with me every day, everywhere I go. And it is fantastic. It's always in my pocket. I have multiples of this device for absolutely no reason at all. Uh, it all started with the Mio Mini last year. This was everybody's favorite device last year. The Mio Mini Plus is a little bit bigger, but it also offers a lot more, including Wi-Fi, which is probably the biggest thing for me with retro achievements. But your gameplay is better. Your screen layout's better. You have more real estate to play your games, and it still fits in your pocket just fine. The way these buttons are set up on here are great, and they already did the step system on their buttons prior to anybody else. Now I know what you're gonna say, because this is where it all starts. It's the Xbox and PlayStation thing. Well, but Amber Nick came out with the 35XX Plus. Cool. Um, not only is it bigger and heavier, um, it also doesn't have any community support really right now. now. It's not saying that the community's not trying to support it. There's nothing here for it. I've seen all kinds of creators now put up this as their device of the year. And you know what? It might be the device of the year next year or some other time. They unfortunately released it a couple weeks before the end of the year. This is half cooked. It's not ready yet. And then you see some creators are rating this number one based off the 35XX. So they're putting the two together and making it their best device of the year. Newsflash, 35XX came out in 2022. Not device of the year this year. They got beat up by the Mio Mini last year. 35XX Plus, I think it's gonna be fantastic once it gets some community support. But right now this device is not anywhere near that. Now we could rate it as best device of the year. If we wanna rate it on hopes and dreams, there's no guarantees that any amount of firmware is gonna fix the problems on here and or make it be able to use all the new features that it has. They also went with a new chipset, which should make it more powerful. The H700 should be the next chipset that we'll probably see here in 2024, but it's relatively untested in the retro game game scene. So we don't know exactly what they're going to be able to get out of this yet. This we can we can tell because it's been out for over a year now. That's right. It came out in 2022. So it's been out for over a year now. The Mio Mini Plus came out in 2023, mostly because Mio was having a hard time getting screens for the Mio Mini. And you know what? I'm glad that they were having a hard time sourcing screens because this thing is phenomenal. And they really made a good product here. It's solid. It has a ton of community support. I don't want to say it has more than the 35XX because I don't think that's true. I think that you see a pretty equal amount of community support. You have different operating systems you can run on both of them. Apparently the heads of the two operating systems were, were both chefs because we got garlic and onion. So I don't know why that is, but the Mio Mini is definitely my device as far as a vertical handset would go. There is just not a better one out there. And I'm sorry if you think differently, but you're wrong. And I really do hope the 35XX Plus lives up to what the hype is behind it because I think that that could be great especially since they're using this chip and coming out with more models like the 35XXH, which also is not going to be 2023's device of the year because it's not coming out for another five days. Next, I'd like to quickly talk about the TrimUI Smart Pro. This was a device I didn't see coming, like literally it just showed up in my house. But no, on the real, this, uh, this device is better than what I thought we would get after the last TrimUI Smart device. Granted, the other one turned out to be okay in the end, but even without custom firmware, this is a solid device. There are a few quirks, these shoulder buttons suck. I mean, it's nice that they did that instead of inlines, but they're really hard to push down. And I keep playing with them, hoping that they'll uh, kind of loosen up a little bit. None of that's happened yet. But the operating system's stable. Uh, it still works with your retro achievements. Got Wi-Fi, all that fun stuff. And it even has this little button down here that nobody knew what it did for the longest time, but it's just a battery saver, essentially, to, to pull the horsepower back a little bit. And that's what I have to say about that. Though I do believe this is my probably second favorite device that was released last year. 
And yes, it is another Retroid Pocket, but this is the Retroid Pocket 2S. This thing is awesome. And one thing that's cool about this too is uh, the AY Odin took some parts off this, like the sticks and things like that. Uh, shoulder buttons are good. They're not too crazy. They're a little springy, but not too bad. Buttons aren't overly loud, when, but they are still clicky. So they're still tactile. It still feels good. And everything on here pretty much plays similar to the Pocket Flip, where you're going to be able to play a very, very light, very, very light Switch games. But for the most part, everything in between there plays well. I played through Wind Waker on GameCube, and, and I made it through the entire game on there with minimal issues. And there's a couple of times where it slowed down a little bit, but that was few and far between, and I kind of forgot about it until I just brought it up now. So this is a great device. It is pocketable. I think that they did a good job designing it, and it works really well, and it's pretty reliable. For an Android device, it does very well. Now, within this price category, I was really kind of struggling as I've been working my way through the pricing on what to choose here because these two devices are awesome. And I'm pretty sure the Flip came out in 2023. I'm trying to remember. Pretty sure it was 2023. I'm too lazy to go check, so let's pretend like it did. Um, I really do like this 405V as well. This, though, is not a device for everybody. And to get something that's pretty much the same size and still sort of vertical, even though it's a Flip, it still kind of has that vertical form to it, this is a better device. I know people are going to say, well, they break. And yes, yes, they do. Some of them do break the hinges. Now, I haven't had any problems with this. Apparently, the watermelon ones didn't have the hinge issue. I am not having any issues with mine. It works just fine, and I use it all the time. Unfortunately, the 405V, as much as I love this device, if you're playing any games that really need a lot of attention to buttons and you're mashing and things like that, this is not a good device for that. I tried playing through God of War with this, the furthest I've ever played, which is past the intro really, but the furthest I've ever played in God of War, but my hands started to get sore after a while. So this device here just really, it's not because of the form factor, it's really just because of how it's laid out. My ring fingers getting these grooves here, it really kind of tears your fingers apart and when you're really going for it, it, uh, it's not great. The other thing is, these shoulder switches are so sensitive on the back here that if your dog farts, it will hit the switches for you. I don't like that at all. They're overly sensitive. I haven't figured out a way to fix it yet. I've been looking. I haven't seen anybody else find a way to fix it yet either. The answer might be aftermarket switches because they tend to be stiffer, but I still haven't seen anybody post anything about aftermarket switches being better on this. So that takes that off of my top list. Still a good device. I wouldn't recommend it for anybody that doesn't already have multiple devices. That's kind of more of a, a collector fun thing to play with. Where when you have the flip here, this device does pretty much everything you want. It even does some light switch play, but it'll play everything from, you know, Atari to light switch. Mostly without hiccup. You might have a few issues in there, but for the most part, eh, there's no hiccup there. And now since I said we're not going to stay in price and or my favorites order, I do also want to give an audible mention to the XU10. This took something like the 353V and brought it to a different level. It's a little bit more comfortable. The sticks are more comfortable to use if you're actually playing games with sticks with having them inside. They just took the original design ideas and really just kind of improved on them. So they changed the way the lip is. This lip is fine. They added this thing on top. I don't understand why. Uh, this isn't one of my favorite devices of the year, but it is definitely up there as far as great devices that came out last year. And I just kind of wanted to talk about it for a second because they also went away from your normal D-pad and went to a PlayStation style D-pad. And I'll be honest, the buttons on this thing are phenomenal. Way better than anybody expected. And your shoulder buttons are offset a little bit. They work great. I've played many a game on this. When this came out, I spent about two months using this to play through a couple of different games that I wanted to play. And, and I love it. One other thing I wanted to mention on here is we have a lot of clones this year. And I don't want to give them too much clout so that companies kind of stop ripping each other off. But to be fair, they're all kind of clones anyways. Two of the big ones that made a big splash this year are these two. So this is the R35S and this is the R36S. And there is an R33S coming out, it looks like, which will be a Mia Mini clone, which almost looks exactly like a Mia Mini. One thing they have done in these, though, in some instances, is actually made them perform better than the original devices that they're cloning. And in that aspect, there is some positivity because that will force these manufacturers who are charging more to create more powerful devices. Otherwise, you can get a clone of it and the, these clones are going, you know, 40, 50 bucks versus one of them is 130 or had been all year. I think it just dropped down to about 100, but you have an opportunity to push those manufacturers to move their products even further. Now, it did take almost a full year for these companies to copy them. So they definitely, you know, the manufacturers definitely had their time to, to make up the difference, but I don't condone this. I don't want to condone this because I want to see actual companies be innovative. 
and we've seen these guys get in trouble for making these devices already, but at the same time, it's pushing the manufacturers to make better devices and make them more affordable. So there is that aspect of it, which is really good. There is some quirky things like having to cut out the back of the keypads to make them work right, but let's be honest, you get yourself a 35XX and you got to open it up and tape it, tape it together so you can use your D-pad. Otherwise, your D-pad doesn't work correctly. So is that really that different? But I just wanted to bring these up. These aren't going to make my top list for the year, mostly because they're clones of really good devices. But the other side of that coin is even those really good devices that we started with before they got cloned are clones. They're all clones of something. So your, your Mio Mini is really just a tiny DMG clone, right? I mean, everything looks and acts like something else. Now, you could say it's not technically a clone because it's not taking cartridges and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still kind of a clone. So I wanted to talk about my favorite streaming device of the year. And no, it's not the D Cloud, though I do love this device. Don't get me wrong. And the price has come down, but initially at a $350 price tag, this device does a lot, but not $350 a lot. You would be better off buying an AYN Odin, even a first generation one, than spending the money on this. The screen's an inch different, I get it, but whatever. And then there came the Absolute One, which is based off one of the original designs for the Logitech G Cloud. And this device is not only thinner, right? I guess I do have a case on here, but still, you just have to believe me. It's thinner, it's lighter, it has the same size screen. It gets really good battery life still, which is impressive. You still get some decent joysticks, though they are absolutely tiny, but you get a device for almost half the price that does everything the other one does. It does have a pretty weak processor, both do, but you don't really need a super heavy processor for doing cloud gaming and some light retro gaming. So these devices are great, but this is my cloud pick of the year is the Absolute. This thing is phenomenal. I love this thing. I, you know, I was behind it from the beginning and I'm glad that it turned out to be what it is and can't wait to see what they come up with next year. And now lastly, we're going to talk about the Odin 2, which is the absolute beast of a device from 2023. There are some good Windows handhelds out there. There's the Steam Deck, which, you know, honestly, pricing-wise, isn't really much more. It's kind of in that same wheelhouse as the Odin 2. So you could argue that the Steam Deck would be a better device. I can see that argument. I understand it. I also understand you can't fit the Steam Deck in a backpack. So there's, there's a lot of things that are great about the Steam Deck, especially with the OLED model. And if I had a Steam Deck, maybe that would be my device of the year. I have played with them before. I haven't played with the OLED yet. But the Odin was my favorite device last year, and the Odin 2 just took everything the Odin had and went to the next level, without really outdating the Odin. Like, the Odin is still a valid device. They really kind of pre-built that thing. But for an affordable Android handset that can play pretty much anything you want, including some heavy Switch stuff, which I did one video on the Odin. I will do another one, uh, maybe more Switch focused. But I, if you can play Red Dead Redemption on that, which you can, in using Yuzu, which is weird, uh, just because... Yuzu doesn't seem like it's nearly as powerful as Skyline was, but now Skyline's kind of way back in the wayside. The Odin is a beast. It has no problem with PS2, it has no problem with Dreamcast. I haven't found any games yet. Now, granted, there probably are games out there that won't run well on there, but that's just emulation in general. There's some games you can throw the biggest processor, the most memory, everything at, and you'll never get a clean, good playing experience. The Odin, though, everything I've thrown at it, it's been able to play. And mine, unfortunately, is not with me today to, while making this video. So, that's why I'm not showing it to you in my hands. But I am including video from a video I did on it already, so you guys can just enjoy that. And I'll come out with some more videos on the Odin here over the course of the year. I'm trying to think of which of my picks isn't controversial. And I don't know that there's any, because I'm pretty sure there's controversy in all this. We need to get away from that Xbox and PlayStation mentality in 2024 and really just embrace what's going on in this industry right now because we've never seen anything like this and we need to get these manufacturers to continue to push devices and make them affordable. And the only way we're going to do that is if we continue to support these devices because the less they sell, the more expensive they get. That's just economics. Not just in 2023, but just in general. Thank you to all the devs out there that make these devices even better. A lot of times the manufacturers are just dumping these things off not really putting any time into the operating systems and just praying that somebody does something with them. So thank you to all the devs out there that have really come out with new firmware for these things and helped them reach their potential. Even the good devices can use a little TLC. So thank you. Another honorable mention is to my subscribers. Thank you for sticking around, commenting on videos, liking stuff, sharing these videos with your mom, or maybe it's your mom that's sharing them. I don't know. Whoever's sharing them, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I've got a lot of plans here for 2024. First off, I need to clean off my desk. I've got way too many devices out here. These have all stacked up here over like the last four months. So I need to get these cleaned off. 
start with a fresh slate. I do still have a handful of 2023 devices I have yet to do reviews on. I'm trying to get through all of them. It's hard with the newborn, but we're making do with what we got. So look out for some videos. I should have another video pop up right after this one, fairly close to this one anyways. I've got a few that I'm just editing right now. My goal is to get this out before midnight tonight. I'm shooting this on New Year's Eve. My goal is to get this out before your balls drop. That's all I got for you today. I'd love to hear your comments down below. I'm sure some people are upset about some of my, my top picks or that I didn't put other ones on. I just, there's so many and there's so many that I love. These are just some of my favorites. There are other devices I use really often that didn't make this just because of time. So that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and like this video. Share this video with your friends because sharing helps the channel grow. And my wife says that I'm more of a grower than a shower. So I could use all the help that I could get. Thanks for watching. Bye. Retrospect. Somehow you made it this far into the video. So either you drank too much here tonight on New Year's and passed out and woke up to me talking right now. Or you actually watched it all the way through. Either way, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, if you're just hanging around watching videos, Google gave you a couple suggestions here to watch. Take a look. Maybe you'll like it. Thanks. I'm out.